All righty, guys. We're going to give everybody a few minutes here to get connected. Let everybody get all connected up here while we uh, get started. But I want to welcome you in to the Aftershock. I apologize it took me a little bit long to get it started there. Um, we, had a, we had some callers left on the line after the end of the program, and I wanted to make sure they got their questions answered, so I had to take care of those guys real quick. Um, but, uh, yeah, we went ahead. Like I said, last five minutes of the show, everybody calls. That was more calls in five minutes than we had the entire program. So four callers and three of them in the last five minutes. Got to love that. Callers make the show. It makes the show a lot more interesting to have people there actually, you know, engaging with the program. But that's all right. I'm just glad we had some callers at all, so that's good. All right, so uh, basically, uh, it was hilarious. I, uh, I fell for big tech. So, all right, I admit, guys, you know, I, I was 100% engaged in all of the political stuff shortly after the election. Um, I've come to similar conclusions as many people have about the election. I have a philosophy in life, though, that I don't get hung up on things that I can't do anything about. Um, because it just gives me angst, right? It gives me, it makes me uneasy. It, it drains my energy away from things that I can do something about. That doesn't mean I ignore them or pretend they don't exist. It just means that they're not the focus of my existence, right? So, you know, I, I you know, I read, I look at Liberty Daily once a day. Some of the stuff there is, is on Mark. Some of the stuff is Moonbat stuff. Um, you know, I don't really look at Drudge anymore because I can't trust it. You know, I just, I don't know who's running it anymore. It, it's obviously changed. Um, you know, I, I still listen to Fox News in the truck, you know, because what else are you going to listen to? Uh, I tried watching Newsmax TV, but it's a giant echo chamber. I mean, and that's not what I want in my news. And I guess this is something I was talking with Scott about this during the breaks here. And I was like, you know, I wish there was a, a media source I could go to that would that I could trust to give me the stories, right? Just to give me the information. Um, Scott raised a good point. He goes, all the kids coming into journalism now, they're, they're working for peanuts. They have less experience than ever. Um, you know, they're there because they have an agenda. They want to change the world, and that's what you're going to get. You know, that's what you're going to get. <clears throat> and then, of course, there's the business aspect of it. You have to please your audience, and Fox News has learned that fact. In fact, we made a comment listening to Fox News uh, during the breaks here that, uh, boy, they sure have made a hard turn, haven't they? All of a sudden, they're getting real conservative all of a sudden again. Uh, it's like somebody up at the top realized, ruh row, you know, we had a problem. So I don't know. You know, I don't know. I know we're living in some crazy times right now. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I do understand that constitutionally, the president of the United States has not been determined yet, constitutionally speaking. Totally get that. Every indication from every source you can see is that it's going to be Biden because that's every indication from every source. And I don't mean source like media source. I mean like the electors that are going to go vote are going to say they're going to vote for Biden. So unless they send different electors or those electors flip for some reason, you know, it's going to be Biden, right? So again, all I can do is prepare for an eventual Biden administration that's not going to be business friendly, that is probably not going to be actually run by Joe Biden, but run by other people. But then isn't that the lesson that we've learned in the last four years, that the people that you thought were running the country aren't the people that really run the country? It's the people who work in the departments that run the country who run the country. The people you can't fire. The people you can't identify. Uh, the people that say one thing and then do another thing. So it's really hard. I mean, the more of this you, you consume, it's really hard not to get really cynical on, on government as a whole. Um, I mean, and a lot of us, were, we're not exactly fans of government to begin with, but, you know, wow. Why don't you just do your basic functions and get out of my face. Uh, so anyway, a great, the reason I'm bringing all this up is uh, during the show, um, a person, I uh, can't remember his name just yet. Let me, let me pull this up real quick because I haven't actually checked to make sure that I'm broadcasting successfully at this point. Uh, let's compute this. I want to make sure I've actually got, there we go. Yeah, 65 people watching, so I better have audio. Is there a way not to have Android device screen time out when watching a web browser? Okay. So, yep, so we got some questions here, so my audio must be good. Um, I recorded a whole slew of training videos this week, only to realize after an entire day of recording that my microphone was on the wrong source. I watched the first video. It was great. Then I tweaked the setting, and then I continued the setting that I tweaked disabled my microphone. So I'm very, very focused on making sure my microphone is accurate after losing a whole day of work. Um, so we had a... <laughs> We had a question from a, from a viewer on Facebook during the show asking me to talk about Operation Snow Globe. And I'm sorry, I, I, 
you know, there's something in the news about Sidney Powell every day. And before the whole election thing, I didn't hear anything about Sidney Powell. I don't know who Sidney Powell is. I don't know if she's really as good as the left or the right says she is or the devil incarnate that the left says she is. I don't know. Um, I don't know what her interest is. I don't know where she's getting the money to do the lawsuits. I, I don't know any of this stuff. Uh, but anyway, you know, she's she's a, a factor in all of this, and she's got this um, this interview or something about this thing called Operation Snow Globe, okay? Um, so I'm like, what is Operation Snow Globe? I've never heard of this before. So I, I popped open a tab in my browser. Now, you have to understand, guys, we're in the business of optimizing websites for clients. Um, 90% of the search public uses Google. So if you're a business and you want to get more business, you have to rank on Google. You can, you can hate them. You can kick them all day long. But there's a saying that says, don't let your politics get in the way of your investments. And if you're a business, that's your investment. You need to rank on Google. Okay? So my, my default browser is Google. So I do a search for Operation Snow Globe. First result, Operation Snow Globe, 26 people charged in Northeast Ohio drug bust. That was from 2017. Next article, Cleveland car shop owners sold and stored heroin fentanyl from 2017. Operation Snow Globe, third result, drug bust. Fourth result, Operation Snow Globe, drug bust from 2017. Next result, battery operated snow globes at wayfair.com. Next result, 11 inch Christmas snow globe lantern musical on amazon.com. Next up, Operation Snow Globe KND code module from fandom. Well, I don't even know what the heck that is, but that is not about any kind of political or election stuff. Result number nine, alleged drug rig fugitive arrested from the Daily News in 2017. And result number 10, shoebox stories, Isabella and a snow globe. Those are your top 10 Google results. I went to duck.com after I realized, I'm like, Scott and I are looking at each other like, what does this person want me to talk about a drug bust from 2017 for? Is there some like conspiracy theory thing I don't know about? Like what's going on here? Um... No, and he, he says, no, it's this thing about Hillary Clinton taking a bribe back in, back in the day from the former chief executive of Overstock.com. And I, I remember seeing that headline, but I didn't read the story because, number one, newsflash, Hillary's corrupt. That's okay. Um, the former CEO of Overstock.com, he had the commercials with the big O and the, the woman that was dressed in all white. Uh, and she was like, oh, you know, that's all I remember about Overstock.com. He hung out with Glenn Beck a lot back in the day. Uh, he, bought, he was a big Bitcoin supporter. I remember that about the guy. Um, none of those things really register on my I should know I should know what this guy's up to meter. So guy that I don't really care about tells me something I already know. Don't read the story. <laughs> so anyway, that was it. So I did a, Google, a search on Duck, basically. And on Duck, my first search result, now, of course, I'm not counting ads here. But my first search result is Operation Snow Globe, Overstock Founder Admits to Bribing Hillary Clinton. Next result, Operation Snow Globe. Um, this is from 2020, so it's not the drug bust. Uh, next one is Patrick Byrne, Operation Snow Globe. Next one is Operation Snow Globe on Investment Watch. Next one is Op Operation Snow Globe on the Citizen Free Press. Next result um, is Operation Snow Globe, 26 people charged in a drug bust. Okay. Next one, Overstock CEO says the FBI tapped in to bribe Hillary. Next one, uh, CEO bribes Hillary. Next one, uh, Obama tells CEO to bribe Hillary through FBI. So literally, nine of the ten results on Duck are about the current news information event regarding something called Operation Snow Globe. On Google, zero out of ten results tell me anything about this. Even though, let, let's, okay, let's go over to Google real quick and let's hit on, Google has a news tab, right? So now I'm going to go to Google News. First result, socially distant Santa greets families at the snow globe spectacular. Next result, Santa Claus puts a snow globe, puts, Santa Claus is inside a snow globe to prevent the spread of COVID. Holiday Guide 2020, largest county begins a new shutdown, White House press FDA approves a vaccine. Literally, there is nothing in any of these news sources about Operation Snow Globe. So interesting, right? That if I click on the news tab here on Duck, um, okay, there's a Snopes article about it, um, as, and they call that news. That, that's kind of interesting. But at, at least, this is what I mean, at least they're being balanced about it, right? They're saying, yes, it's a news source, 
And yes, there's a story about it. And you asked to see stories about Operation Snow Globe from a news source. And we're going to trust you to know that Snopes.com is a left-leaning fact check website. Okay. I, thank you. Let me decide what's what. Don't try to filter my news and show me only things you think I want to see. Because if you only look at what you want to see, you miss the, the whole rest of the world out here. Um, so let's see. There's a Fortnite story. There's a Operation Snowdown event. Another f couple Fortnite stories. Another Fortnite. The Fortnite probably pushed them out of the top of the feed here because almost all of these things are Fortnite stories. Um, so yeah, it doesn't appear that any major news source is covering Operation Snow Globe. So there you have it. I don't know if there's been any stories on Fox or any other actual AP wire or anything like that. So if we go back to what is Operation Snow Globe and we do it on Duck because we can't see anything on Google about it. All right, this is before it's news.com, in the matrix.com, U-S-S-A news.com. Um, investmentwatchblog.com and Citizens Free Press. The only one of these I've recognized as possibly even close to a news source, <laughs> I would have to say, and, and I'm stretching it here, like some place that I would trust for news, like some place that I would go to and say they have professional reporters. None of them. But anyway, so what is this? Basically, the, the concept of the story is that... Uh, that when the Obama administration included Hillary, or basically when they thought Hillary was going to win, they wanted the ability to have leverage over Hillary when she was president of the United States after Obama left office. So they went ahead and uh, the FBI recruited the uh, CEO of Overstock.com to put together uh, an $18 million bribe to get 10 minutes in a room with Hillary Clinton for a client. Uh, we want to facilitate a meeting. We're willing to pay you, you know, $18 million for this meeting. Will you take the money and give us the 10 minutes? And she did. There you go. That's the story. She never, she didn't win. She didn't get elected. So it was $18 million poorly spent. Uh, but now, for whatever reason, this is all coming to light later, probably because uh, Biden has hinted that he might include Hillary in his cabinet somewhere. Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, something like that. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, there you have it. That's, uh, that's Operation Snow Globe. All right, let's go through the comments here. Bill, good to have you. Mitch, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Do you remember the blueberry did it? Did I remember blueberry? Let me tell you about the blueberry scones. People at Hy-Vee finally caught on that, uh, that I'm looking for blueberry scones because they're always out of them. And every time I like, come up to the counter, I'm like, do you have any blueberry scones back there perhaps that are cooling that you'd like to put in a container for me? And they never have any. So every time I went into Hy-Vee, I picked up a container of blueberry scones. Sometimes they had two, but it was the last two. So I grabbed them both. So I finally came home the other day, and my wife said, Thor, you have a problem. I'm like, well, what's the problem? She's like, she opens the pantry up, and literally we have like a stack of these high V, you know the high V cookie containers, full of blueberry scones. She's like, we have enough scones. <laughs> I'm like, we got them. Roger that. Because you know the second I stop buying them, they're going to stop making them. But anyway, so yes, I have scones. We're good to go. Good morning, Janet. All right, we are here with you. Have my coffee. Enjoying the show. Good to have you, Roger. Thanks for joining us. Roger and Roger back to back. Good morning, Mary. Nice to have you here. Winston, thank you. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Apologize for not checking your message 11 minutes ago so that I didn't have a freak out moment all of a sudden and say, oh my gosh, is my video bad? Do I need to uninstall Semantic Cloud? Endpoint disabled Sophos after a reboot yesterday. Yes, if you have Sophos, you can uninstall Endpoint. Uh, the original behavior of Endpoint was that uh, when we ended your Endpoint account, it should uninstall. Of course, Broadcom changed that behavior, so now it doesn't. So if you have Sophos, if you know you have Sophos, you can uninstall your Endpoint client. Uh, nobody on Endpoint really has protection anymore. Uh, so if you're still on Endpoint and you have not taken Sophos, yeah, we need to get you moved over. Give us a call and bring it in. We'll get you over the shock desk or whatever we got to do. I understand a lot of people didn't do it because of the, the COVID. They didn't want to come into the service center. I totally get that. If that's the case, we can help you out over the shock desk and get it done without any contact that way. So yes, uninstall Semantic Cloud. I'm going to put a quick reply here and say yes, please. And now we are good to go. All right, scrolling back down. All the Shrocks down in Shrockville loved Christmas. Oh, come on, get away. Uh, a lot, but the hackers just north of Shrockville did not. <laughs> we got a regular old Richard Seuss over here. That's funny. 
Mark, is there a way not to have the Android screen timeout when watching a web browser? I watch auctions online through Firefox and a Samsung Galaxy Tablet or 9. The maximum screen time setting is 10 minutes. Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I know that there are settings in apps that will keep the screen on for indefinite periods of time, but not in a browser itself. Um, well, I mean, the browser is an app, of course, but the uh, I don't think there's a way to do it in the browser. You're just going to have to touch the screen every few minutes. You know, that's honestly going to be your best way to, to have some kind of interaction with it. It will be keeping it on. Also, Joy Bear suggested that Dr. Joe Biden would be an excellent choice for the Surgeon General. What an idea. That's why I get all of my news from The View. You know, God bless you, John. It takes all types to make the world go round. There is a lid for every pot. And I can appreciate the fact that you are an epic Joy Bear fan. Um, we love you anyway. <laughs> Good morning from Round Rock, Texas, says Carolyn. Be sure to look to the southwest sky shortly after sundown to see the great conjunction of 2020. What is... I, heard, I saw another headline again about something that I have no control over the great conjunction of 2020 and something that it was something apocalyptic is supposed to happen I don't know but what, what what's next right I mean seriously <laughs> what could, what could, yeah, I'm not even going to say it out loud not even going to say it out loud the most important thing is to show how corrupt the FBI is again you know I hear you Ron um, it's hard you know you, you want to believe that these institutions that your entire life have been revered. I mean, they made a whole series about the FBI called The X-Files, right? <laughs> Every kid in the 90s wanted to be an FBI agent because you got to go hunt for aliens, you know? Um, and then you find out that, you know, every organization is run by humans. And humans all have the same flaws. And then you just compound those flaws over a period of time with no consequences. And then all of a sudden you have a situation like we're in now. And you, you wonder how you get out of it. And you wonder what the options are to get out of it or how you can get out of it even. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to dive down into the weeds on this because people, reasonable people can have different opinions on politics. And that doesn't mean we can't all be friends and we can't get along, right? And that's one of the things that really discourages me about the media compartmentalization. I mean, it's like... I've got people in my Facebook feed that annoy the heck out of me when they post things that I disagree with. With that said, they can also post things that are really funny that we can all laugh about together and we can be connected. And I think that's a good thing. Um, doesn't mean that we're going to vote the same. Doesn't mean we want the same things for our communities. Doesn't mean, you know, the other day there was a post uh, for the Papio Pub that they were talking about they were going to do a, a special for the Husker game, the Rutgers game. And they were going to do free shots for every touchdown the Huskers scored, which, you know, everybody kind of laughed about because there's not a lot of risk there, right? Uh, you know, maybe for every first down, you know, every, every point maybe, <laughs> free shot per point. Uh, so anyway, you know, but literally the comments on this is just a small business trying to make a small business restaurant bar trying to survive what has been probably the most challenging year ever for small businesses. And comment after comment after comment from people. How irresponsible. Don't you know there's a pandemic going on? You know, blah, 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 down the list. And I totally get it. There are some people who don't go out, who, are, who haven't left their, there are some people, believe it or not, who have not left their house since March. They exist. There are people currently who are not going to Christmas celebrations because they don't want to have the spread of coronavirus. You know what? Does that hurt me? No. I mean, my sister had a concern. So we all get together on Christmas Eve for my family stuff, and then we do Christmas Day with everybody else's families, right? So my sister tells me that her husband's family is, is really scared of COVID. Uh, they're really concerned about it, and they are not sure that gathering for Christmas is going to be wise, especially if Enid and my, my sister's name is Enid. Her family is going to go out and see their extended family us. So, you know, we have the possibility of spreading the COVID, right? So she said, hey, can we do our Christmas over Zoom so that we can go to my husband's family this year? You know, I was kind of, wow, you know, but why not? I mean, I, we'll figure it out. You know, now is not the time to be all like, you know, we'll figure it out. It, it'll be fine. Um, 
a little more of that would make the world go around. So I posted a comment saying, "Hey, give these guys some slack. They're just trying to make they're trying to make a buck so they can pay their people, so they can eat, so their families can eat, so their kids can get stuff that they need for school. You know, everybody works for somebody. So don't knock them down so hard. You know, these small businesses are what makes our communities so vibrant and, and is the culture of our community." Every community's got a Walmart. Every community's got a Sam's Club. They don't do anything for the community culturally besides provide inexpensive goods, which is valuable. But, you know, the Papio, they're not giving away free shots for every touchdown the Huskers score. As you're shopping down the aisle, there's not like the uh, the Bacardi section over here where, like, hey, the Huskers just scored. Come on back to aisle 47 for your free shot. You know, <laughs> that doesn't happen there, right? So, uh, so anyway, I guess... I just kind of jumped on that comment a little bit in a, a very positive, very polite way. I didn't tell anyone they were silly or stupid. One of them, of course, was a nurse, or at least said she was. I'm a nurse, and I hear the code blue ICU calls all day long. And I'm like, that's an ICU. Of course you hear codes being called in an ICU all day long. It's called an intensive care unit. People go there when they're in trouble. People die there. People come out of there sometimes. And of course, you know, I'm not belittling the COVID situation or anything like that. It's just, I think my emotional bucket is just empty. Um, what do you want from me? You know, if I'm, if I'm going to go do Christmas, I'm going to go do Christmas. You know, what do you want from me? Um, I can't save the world. I'm one guy. So do your part. I wear my mask. Okay, I'll wear my mask. I don't mind that. Uh, you know, I do sometimes, but I, I do mind it, but I do wear it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do the things that, that I can do to keep other people safe. But, you know, come on. I'm, I, it's my life. I'm going to live my life. I'm not going to hide in my house for a year. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, or two years or five years or however long this goes on. All right. Don't read the news articles. Watch the video. That's great if you have time, Ron. <laughs> Uh, that's one thing I'm kind of short on. So a lot of times I don't have the time to watch the videos. Um, so I do have to rely on synopsis or, or written words and things like that. So I, I try to read a lot so that uh, that I get a lot of different perspectives. But uh, everybody's got a video now. Everybody's got a podcast. Every, I mean, literally I had to, you know, I was talking about on Parlor. Dan Bongino sends me 20, 27,000 videos to watch a day just of him. And I'm like... You know, I, I make some video too, guys, and I, I appreciate that you guys watch it. I try not to make so much video that it's overwhelming, though, you know, that, that I dilute the message. I don't want to do that. All right. Sherilyn Rich, welcome from Council Bluffs. Thank you. Omar says I'm a hoarder? <laughs> All right. Good morning, Don. Good to have you. What is the name with the government agencies being hacked? What is the name of that? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I, I, it's on the, let me check. Of course, somewhere down the feed, five people have already posted the answer, right? Oh, what is the name of the hack? It starts with an S, I think. Gosh, I can't, I just can't remember it. Uh, it was a security, SolarWind, yeah, okay. So basically, SolarWinds makes uh, security products that other agencies and companies use to secure their network. So to give you guys an analogy, this would be, uh, it's called the Fire Eye Breach, came through SolarWinds. But this would be like if somebody hacked Sophos and used Sophos to spy on all of your computers. That would, that's the level of like, holy cow, you know, like that's going on here. Um, and it turns out that the Dominion voting systems were all running security software from SolarWind. So you can, you can connect the dots here about why this is in the news right now. Of course, maybe maybe they weren't hacked by, you know, crazy CIA, FBI people. Maybe they were actually hacked by um, bad guys in China or Russia, and they manipulated our election. And if that's the case, if a foreign government interfered with the election, with the election that changed the result of the election, that would allow the president to, uh, to declare some things that basically prevent Joe Biden from taking office. So that's, that's the long and the short of the story. That's the angle. Um, again, scary stuff because, wow, can you imagine? Can you imagine actually executing something like that? And then, you know, Trump went and said there's something about a party on the 6th. You know, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a great party. You don't want to miss it. It's like, uh, okay, I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen here. Oh, uh, golly. Good morning. Do you have any advice on Bitwarden Password Manager? Bitwarden. I've never heard of Bitwarden. 
Um, basically, for password managers, the one that I know is good is LastPass. Uh, LastPass does a really great job. It assigns a unique password for every uh, everything you go to. It uh, allows you to access those passwords on multiple devices, including your phone. Bitwarden is a free and open source password management service that stores sensitive information such as website credentials in an encrypted vault. Vault, excuse me. The Bitwarden platform offers a variety of client applications, including a web interface, desktop applications, browser extensions, mobile apps, and a CLI. It was initially released in 2016. Last updates for all their products were four months ago. So, it doesn't look like there is... I don't know anything bad about them. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to say anything bad because I don't know anything bad about them, but I do know that LastPass is good, and that's the one I would recommend. All righty. Your views on... Oh, these faces keep popping up, but I can't read anything. Your views on the hacking of the U.S. government computers. Well, here's the thing. One thing you have to realize is you can do every possible level of protection, and you can still be open to hacking. So there is no such thing as perfect security, right? All you can do is have more security or less security. We also know the more security you have, the more difficult it makes systems to use. So you have to strike a balance between having maximum security, a usable system, and compartmentalizing the information within those systems. So all these US agencies that got hacked by this, it's because they were all using the same security products. And when that security product got hacked, it resulted in the hack of all these other systems. They call that a failure point. So all of these systems and the government had a single point of failure that was attacked. Okay. So it got attacked. Uh, what did we learn from this? Well, wow, we need to have some different kinds of systems in place maybe. Or you know, how do you not have a single point of attack? You want to rely on the same security system for all agencies and all aspects of the government, right? Um, you want to make sure maybe we have to have some government employees working with whatever company if we're going to outsource it. Um, I would hate to ask the government to try to insource it to do it internally because as we have learned that the, the government's not exactly incredibly efficient at that kind of thing. And then also you're just moving the single point of failure. You're moving it from an external influence to an internal influence. People are still subject to bribery. Look at the guy on the Intel Committee that's uh, tied up with a Chinese spy. You know, it's like it can happen to anybody, right? So anybody in a position of power is going to get potentially compromised. So you, how do you secure the stuff? So the, the thing you can do is you can increase your security as much as possible, full well knowing you're never going to be perfectly secure. This is what a zero-day vulnerability is. This is a vulnerability that nobody knows exists until it's exposed, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, dang, and then there's a patch for it. And that's why Secure Updater is so important. Get the patches for the software when it's released. Because if you wait two weeks, you're just getting exposed more. So, And then all the bad guys know about it, so all the script kiddies, all the bad guys who aren't really, really bad, but they're, they're smart enough to be a little bit bad, then they know where to go, and then they go do the same thing. All righty, let's see. 2020 is about over, but I think that Mad Max is set in 2021. Nice, nice meeting you on Wednesday in Des Moines. Thanks, Don. Yeah, Mad Max was set in 2021. Uh, <laughs> 2020 is almost over, which leads me to remind everybody about the uh, Thor Stradamus show. We're going to be doing, uh, oh, golly, is that? So the question is, do you guys want me to do Thor Stradamus next Sunday on the 27th? Or do we want to wait until 2021 and do it on the 3rd? Um, so basically, I think I'd like to wait to do it on the 3rd, if that's okay with you guys, just because there's not going to be any news um, the week of Christmas. It's going to be a completely dead weekend that weekend. Um, so I won't have a lot of news stories to talk about. Um, and I'd rather not just do a show full of promo stuff. And I will be doing a live show on the 3rd. So uh, let's, uh, let's plan on doing that on the 3rd. We'll do the Thor Stradamus show. All right. Do, 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 do. I heard that virus testing is a $200 million a day business. I don't doubt it. The amount of money being thrown. Whenever you take a business or an industry and say, how much money do you need? Thump. Instant delivery. You're going to have, yeah, it's a big business. I want you to have a great Christmas and enjoy being with your family. Thank you, Ronald. I will do that. I will do that. Solar winds. There it is, Ronald. <laughs> I said 10 minutes. I'll be scrolling down the feed. So everyone's going to tell me solar winds. All right, we are extra appreciative of our time this year. Yes, we are. Lovely, Kimberly. That is right. Uh, I truly think 
Family is very important this year. Yeah, family is very important. It's always very important, but I think that the events this year maybe reminded some people how important it was or is, you know. And that's one of the other reasons, you know, it's like I understand people not wanting to get together for Christmas because, you know, they're worried that uh, about COVID, right? Um, you know, my dad's not going to be at Christmas this year because he passed away. So you never know what's going to happen, right? This could this could be the last Christmas. Tomorrow could be the last day. So I just remind you, every day is valuable. Every day is, is a treasure that you should value. I, Rush Limbaugh's been saying that a lot lately. You know, every day he wakes up, it, it's a gift from God. It's a treasure, and uh, and he makes the most of it. Uh, and it, if you live your life that way, it's a good lesson for everybody, I think. But uh, again, like I said, there are some people who are concerned that are concerned for very valid reasons. They have pre-existing conditions, things like that. We'll find workarounds for those people. That's that's how you live life, right? You deal with problems. So is there a so there is a parlor app and a parlor and a there is a parlor app and a parlor app. What's the difference? Uh, well, I mean, there's a parlor website you can go to at parlor.com, and then there's the app for smartphone that you can install on your smartphone. Uh, it's the same thing as going to twitter.com or installing the Twitter app on your smartphone. It's the same thing. Be careful about fake apps. That's the other thing. You might be seeing that there's another parlor app. Well, it might not be the parlor you're thinking of. So that's a that's an important heads up. Make sure you're actually getting the parlor app for social networking. Wetware is always the weak link in security measures. Yep, that's right, Mark. We can fix we can protect the hardware, we can protect the software, but the wetware, the human in the chain, that's where we have a lot of problems. Merry Christmas to everyone in After Shrockville. Thanks, Thor, and blessings to you and your family. Merry Christmas from Pierre, South Dakota. Thank you very much, Deborah. I appreciate that. Kimberly, it looks like more viewers in the Aftershock than the normal show. Interesting. Okay, well, this is a supply and demand thing, right? So you don't have the terrestrial radio option for the Aftershock, number one. Number two, believe it or not, this year, the Aftershock is the place where everything that doesn't fit happens. And we've made some pretty... Well, let's just say that they'd get me kicked off of Twitter if I made the predictions today that we we made back in, like, February about COVID, about what was happening in China before it came here, um, or before the publicly acknowledged date that it came here. I mean, you can't say that kind of stuff anymore at all. You get kicked off a platform. Uh, yeah, I mean, it. we've kind of made a reputation for being a little edgy on the aftershock, so... Uh, I am trying to keep the political stuff under control because I'm cognizant that reasonable adults can have different opinions on politics. And I really, 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 there, if you want an echo chamber, there are tons of echo chambers out there. You can find one anywhere that you can listen to that will tell you the same thing every day, that the other side is bad and your side is amazing. And all I'm saying is they're all run by people. And people can be good and people can be bad. And both sides have good and bad people. Um, the ideologies are different. You know, you could make arguments that they might be actually an evil ideology. You could actually make that argument. Um, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like this is the stuff of nations, basically, which is what's scary because, you know, they, uh, this, the Supreme Court, they're saying Texas is going to secede. And I'm like, no, Carolyn can't live in a different country. Wait, would we have an international customer then? <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, it's like, if, you know, Texas can't secede. Uh, that was settled by the Civil War. The Supreme Court said so, right? So the only way that people are going to secede is through another war. Like a shooting, brother shooting, brother civil war, nasty kind of thing. Can you imagine something like that happening with modern day weapons, with a modern day battlefield, with the modern intertangled uh, alliances and things from all the foreign nations out there? Could you imagine? It, God help us if that would happen. I, I pray that that does not happen. Um, anyone who thinks that that's going to solve a problem is sadly mistaken. That's going to cause the biggest problem. That's going to cause much bigger problems. Much bigger problems than a, uh, a two to four year Joe Biden administration. Um, yeah, way bigger problems. So anyway, there's uh, there's got to be a way to solve this. I just don't know what it is. And I'm hoping that someone smarter than me uh, comes up with a solution because, you know, all I can do is I can I can keep doing my thing. I can keep my customers' technology safe. I can make sure that people know how to use their computers to, to express their ideas and do their things. I can make sure I take care of my family, make sure that we educate our children so they know history, so that they know how to think, they know logic, 
Mm -hmm. uh, so that they have the ability to look at newscasts and say, the other day I was reading something on uh, Liberty Daily, and sometimes they'll post a headline from the Babylon Bee, which is a satire website. Um, something about uh, Newsom says in California that you have to quarantine within your home. So in other words, they wanted you to build <laughs> a smaller quarantine room. They wanted you to quarantine in separate rooms within your home to keep you separate from your family members. Uh, or build a separate structure within your home to quarantine within. It was, a, it was a satire story, right? But Liberty Daily put it up as a real headline. And it's like, I want my kids to be able to read that headline just like I did and say, I know California is a loony place that does some loony things, but that's next level loony. That can't be true. Click, which is exactly why they worded it that way. Gosh, clickbait much. Click, reading the story of Babylon B. Okay, it's not true. Got it. So, but a lesser person skimming fast might have said, wow, that, that's pretty crazy in California. I don't want to live there. Wait till 2021. Yeah. Off topic. Sorry, my bank will not allow a Coinbase link. Google sa search says many banks say Coinbase is not trusted. Have you had any problems linking a bank account? Um, you can't bank with a big bank and use Coinbase. Sorry. You can't be with U.S. Bank. You can't be with Bank of America. You can't be with Westgate Bank. Go with a community bank. I had no problem uh, setting up my Westgate bank account or now my Cornhusker bank account to work with Coinbase. Uh, works perfectly. So you got to you go with a community bank. You're going to thank yourself. It's way cheaper anyway. The fees you're paying at the big banks are astronomical right now. Alrighty, Thor, look at the spelling of parlor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did I spell it wrong? Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't spell it wrong, but yeah, parlor. Yeah, P-A-R-L-O-R. So, yeah, it's spelled differently, so watch out for that when you're getting the app. Good call, Ronald. I really link the discussions in the aftershock. You like them, I think you meant. Good to hear the different views. You know, I don't know. Like I said, you can get an echo chamber anywhere. Yeah, there you corrected. Like, not link. <laughs> um, you can get that kind of stuff. There's places on the Internet for that. Um, you know, here we're talking about tech stuff. So do we have any tech stories, actually? Uh, Google went down this week. Did you hear about this? Uh, the Google uh, Gmail, Google Docs, YouTube users all got hit by an outage. It lasted about four hours on December 14th. Um, they basically had a situation where an authentication server stopped authenticating. Because <laughs> that means a lot, right? So in other words, uh, Google was not allowing communications to go through because they thought they weren't allowed. And they tracked the problem down. They resolved it. And uh, all services were restarted. If you had a problem with your Nest thermostat or your Google Home smart speaker, those products were also impacted by the outage. Um, it looks like the majority of the outage was experienced in the United Kingdom, actually. Uh, heavy in New York, heavy in Florida, the Miami region. Uh, the rest of the country just had moderate moderate outages. I did have some difficulty earlier in the week with Gmail. I was sending myself a, a message about something uh, to transfer a picture from my phone to my email so I could attach it. Excuse me. Oh, my. And, uh, and it wouldn't go through. And I thought, that's weird. And then, of course, it went through. Like It bounced back to me saying my email address was wrong. And I was like, ah, that's not true. I know my own email address. So if you had some problems with Google, Google earlier in the week, it wasn't, it wasn't you. It was them. All right. 50 minutes in, guys. Got to wrap it up. Uh, I have to actually go into the Papillion Service Center because uh, we have a guy that dropped off an Ethereum mining rig that, uh, that I need to fix. Uh, it's not mining, basically. Uh, gosh, if you haven't been following Bitcoin... $24,000 a coin, guys. The low this year, right, right when COVID hit, when the stock market tanked, Bitcoin dropped down to $3,000. And now it's at $24,000. You know, you, everyone asks me, what's going on? Why is it doing this? And I'm like, well, it's complicated. Number one, um, they need another bubble. The, 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 the financial markets need another bubble. I mean, that's the way that our markets work, like it or not. Um, and Everything else already is in a bubble. <laughs> so what are you gonna, where are you going to pump? So all these institutional investors are dumping money into Bitcoin. And I'm not talking about little money. I'm talking like there was a company last week that announced that over the past year they have been quietly buying a b -b 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 billion dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, other companies are spending $100 million, $50 million on Bitcoin. And the problem is that Bitcoin is mined by people with Bitcoin mines. And so it can only be produced at a certain rate. And the faster you produce Bitcoin, the harder it becomes to produce with the goal of maintaining a static rate of Bitcoin production, right? So if Bitcoin production remains static and Bitcoin demand skyrockets, 
from institutional investors, necessarily supply and demand, the price is going to go up, right? So that's one of the reasons why it's going on. Reason number two is the debasement of currency. Um, it's scary to look back historically and look at what's happening right now and, and wonder what our people, wh how can we do what we're doing with the U.S. dollar right now? And I get why we're doing it. I understand all the reasons and rationales. But do you know that for every dollar in existence at the start of 2021, we have printed 40 cents this year? We've increased the M1 money supply by 40% in a single year. If that's not funny money, I don't know what is. So yay, they're going to send you another $600 check. Woo! Don't spend it all in one place. You notice the prices of things are starting to go up? Well, they've been going up all year, but the prices of things are going up. Did you notice the number of discounts are fewer this year? There's not as many sales and special offers. Well, that's, that's part of cost increase, right? That, but CPI strangely isn't affected because we exclude energy and we exclude food. You know, two things you have to have to live your life. Those don't count toward your consumer price index. Um, but boy, buy a new car. It costs the cars going up. Buy a new freezer. Can't buy a freezer, stand up upright freezer for under 700 bucks now. You can't buy a mini fridge for less than $150 now. Remember when mini fridges were like 50 bucks? When I opened the uh, the Des Moines Service Center, we got a steal on a mini fridge for 109 bucks on sale. When we we were watching for it, uh, glug glugs, the water glug glug things, literally, it dispenses. It's a plastic thing that dispenses water and it has a heater and a cooler. Okay, so some are a little fancier than others. 100 bucks. Wow. Why are things so flippin' expensive all of a sudden, right? So anyway, the price of things is going to continue to go up. Uh, that's going to necess be necess necessarily what happens. Eventually, it has to happen. The problem, the reason it hasn't happened previous to this is because we've exported all of that inflation to China. So China will produce our goods at a lower price because the labor costs less. They sell us the goods, allowing our businesses to resell them at a, at a lower price, basically, uh, and make a profit. Well, now if we, if we shore everything back to America, we're paying American labor rates for things. Americans want more money than people in China do. Or even if we send it out to other countries, and this is happening, and wages in China have upward pressure too. So as the wages even in China start to go up, just from 25 cents an hour to 30 cents an hour average, let's say, that causes a 10% price increase in America. It follows down the chain, right? So imagine if we bring everything back to America and do it all here. You're going to be paying double or triple for everything you buy. But your income isn't going to go up double or triple. That's what I'm afraid of. That's, that's the boogeyman in the room that I'm looking at like, that shoe's got, if we keep doing this, that shoe is going to drop. It's got to. If we don't keep doing this, the shoe drops now. So I understand why they're doing it. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind diversifying my assets a little bit, which is exactly why now there is talk in Congress about, uh, watch this story, watch this story really close, banning self-custody wallets for, for cryptocurrency. In English, right now, you can have money in your wallet and you can have money in your bank account, Right? Imagine the government came out and said it is illegal to have cash in your wallet. Wallets are illegal. You can't have any mechanism for holding cash that you carry with you. They're all illegal. You have to keep all of your money in the bank, and you can carry a plastic card that allows you to access your money in the bank. That's what they want to do to cryptocurrency. Because right now, anybody can have a wallet. You can put it on a little card and give it to a friend. It's a private wallet. You know... Nobody knows that that wallet exists. It's on the blockchain. Nobody knows who owns it. Nobody knows when you're going to access it, if you're going to access it. Do you know how much Bitcoin on the blockchain is lost forever because people sent it to the wrong address and there's no way to take that back? Gone forever. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, if they ban self-hosted wallets, which would mean uh, Bitcoin is a huge threat to the banking industry uh, and uh, uh, distributed finance things. Uh, I have a, an account right now with a company called BlockFi. I'm happy to give you a link because I get a credit. If you sign up, ask me for a link. Um, they're paying me 8% interest on my money. Uh, if I leave it in Bitcoin, they're paying me 6% interest in Bitcoin on my Bitcoin. Where can you go in America and get that kind of a rate? And you say, well, Thor, Bitcoin is risky. Well, you're putting your money in the stock market. We can all admit that's in a bubble right now. Is that not risky? You're going to put your money in property? 
Commercial property, that's that's not risky right now. Um, personal residential property, watch what happens. When it well, it's got to eventually expire. The eviction moratorium is supposed to expire in January. When that expires, the number of people around the country that are going to get evicted are going to be massive. There's going to be a lot of sudden vacancies and a lot of people looking for places to live. Is a landlord going to rent to somebody that didn't pay their rent for years before? Or the landlord's going to be so desperate for income, they're going to let anybody in as long as they promise to pay a deposit and pay the rent going forward. Never had anything like this happen before, guys, ever. So is that not risky? Yeah, I mean, the risk is everywhere. Everything is risky right now because everything is unprecedented. So the best thing you can do is put your eggs in many baskets and try to try to get along as best you can. All right, I said I was going to leave, and that was like, you know, seven minutes ago, so I should probably get along with it. Here on. Can I have an email address to contact you about the Bitcoin information? Absolutely. Uh, anybody can email me anytime, tschrock at schrockinnovations.com. So tschrock at schrockinnovations.com is the email address that uh, I carry around in my cell phone. You can reach me there anytime. Uh, if you do email me, I will try to get back to you as quick as I can. I do reply to, to every email. Uh, sometimes if it's an email about a product, like a Schrock product or a particular service concern, I may have one of my employees contact you about that just because it's – I literally get a 1,000 emails a day. Uh, not all of them are customers, but some of them are. And I, I try to respond to everybody, but uh, I only have so many hours in the day. But, yeah, if you want to contact me, I'm happy to share my, my BlockFi link with you as well for my affiliate code. Yay! I think if you sign up from BlockFi using my, my code, I get $25 in Bitcoin and you get $50 in Bitcoin for funding an account. The problem is with BlockFi, you fund an account by depositing cryptocurrency. So you have to have the cryptocurrency first. So you have to have it in a self-hosted wallet in order to put it in your BlockFi account. Um, just to give you guys an idea how nuts the crypto market is right now, how much money you can make there. Um, I have had a BlockFi account for four months now, and I have earned $1,200 in interest in four months. Give me that in a savings account at Bank of America, maybe a money market account. You can't find that. Uh, you know, my stock market account is doing better. My 401k is doing better than that because, you know, I, th I got out of bonds entirely because I realized, like, the, in the last month, it doesn't matter what you're in. If they debase the currency, everything's got to go up. Everything. Not because the companies are doing better, but because the dollar is worth less. So, yeah, be invested in the market. Be in the bubble. Because the way they make the bubble smaller is, deflate, is inflating the currency. Now it's not such a bad bubble anymore, right? Because the dollar is worth less. If we can, de if we can debase the currency by 40% a year and the stock market only goes up 20% a year, what we have in essence done is we've reduced the bubble by 20%, have we not? Uh, so who was that that said inflation is just uh, government stealing from its citizens? There was a, an economist who said that. I don't remember who it was right now, but uh, it's, it's the truth for sure. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you all have a safe and happy Christmas. I uh, hope you all get what you want. If you don't, or if you get technology, so first of all, if you get technology that you don't want, that you don't know how to use, we will help you use it and figure out how you can make it productive in your life. If you don't get the technology that you want for Christmas, we can help you make your old technology work for another year, or we can help you get hooked up with the technology that you actually want. So either way it goes, January is always a busy month at Schrock. We also have a really great special offer coming up in January. Like many other places, we've kind of backed off on the specials recently, and I didn't want to run double specials on the holiday special, right? Um, so basically, we're going to have a really cool popular special in January. We did it last January. You long timers will know what it is. Uh, but literally, it will breathe new life into any old computer you might have laying around so that you can get another year or two years of productive use out of it. And we'll tell you all about it coming up in a couple weeks and maybe, maybe a leak on the aftershock so you can plan ahead. All right, guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see you all again next weekend for another edition of Compute This, and Merry Christmas.